I want to welcome you. Uh, there are more than three people, so I'm really uh, uh, happy to see you. <laughs> uh, there's another stage uh, also cheering, probably for me, but maybe not. So, oh, I see uh, we are already uh, at the wrong slide. I want to start here. Uh, welcome to my talk, uh, Stop Building APIs. Uh, it's not something I commend you to. It's something I want to talk about. Um, and it's all about automating end-to-end uh, -end communication. So uh, it comes from the problem, and I will tell you more about uh, that uh, uh, in the next few slides. But it's, it's all about that we are building a lot of APIs for internal communication. For example, a lot of APIs we build for the for the communication between front-end and back-end. Um, yeah, and that's basically a lot of overhead. So this talk is about how can we automate this uh, communication. So that's basically it. Uh, before I start, uh, a bit about myself. Uh, I'm Peter. Uh, I, I will leave my last name because that uh, probably can be uh, pronounced by everyone. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Masking Technology. Uh, we are a small uh, a software architecture company, and we are focused on building uh, future-proofed software, uh, which means that you build uh, uh, software applications that can last a long time and can really withstand a lot of uh, change. So this talk is a small part of our vision on, uh, uh, on future-proofing. Uh, so I'm a software architect. Uh, but I'm also a full-stack developer, so I like to build software myself uh, 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 as well. Like, uh, uh, eat your own dog food, so everything I design, I, I must be able to implement, uh, to implement myself. Uh, I have about 20-plus uh, years of experience, uh, and in that period I gained uh, a lot of uh, knowledge about how not to do things. So. Uh, and also something about how to do things. Uh, and I've uh, uh, worked with a lot of technologies like uh, Java, uh, C Sharp, PHP, some Python, uh, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and in my spare time, I would uh, 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 I like to draw or, or to illustrate a bit, uh, but uh, it's pure a hobby, so I'm not good at it, so don't hire me. Uh, someone tried once, so I said, uh, I'll do it, but uh, uh, I won't get paid for it. I do it for free. Um, so that's a bit about me. Um, uh, this session, um, uh, a, bit, a bit of a big breakdown. Um, I have a, a small spoiler alert. Uh, uh, we've built it at our company. We've built our own solution. So that is something we are working towards. So I want to take you on a journey uh, on how and why we have built our own solution uh, uh, for this. Um, so first, we are go going to look at uh, the problem. Uh, next, we are going to look at, um, at the research, uh, mainly so how, what is already available to automate uh, the communication. Then uh, we are going to look at the solution we came up with and how that helps. Um, and of course, uh, we are going to do a short demo. Um, it's going to it's going to be a live demo, so uh, prepare for failure. <laughs> I hope it works. Fingers crossed, but I have a backup. So that said, uh, let's go to the problem. So uh, the things I'm going to show you now should be familiar. If not, well, maybe you have to uh, 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 make some conclusions. Uh, so if we are building uh, full stack applications, um, just, I want to know who, who here is a full stack developer. Okay, most, but not all. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, if you build full stack apps, or at least an application, you always have something of a front end, of a UI. So, in this case, we have a simple app and we have a dialogue with, uh, uh, with a question Do you want to delete that item with a yes and a no button? If you press the no, nothing happens. And if you press yes, then we go to the next phase. So it sends a message to uh, the backend, to a server, uh, to call some function like delete item with an ID. Um, and from there, uh, the item actually gets deleted from the database. Uh, I think this should be clear, right? <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, OK. So uh, uh, to build this, so we need to build two things. 
Of course, we need to build a front end and we need to build a uh, back end. And to implement this feature, we need to build uh, the UI, so the dialog in this case. Uh, we need to uh, implement an, an API request to send the message to the backend. And of course, the backend should receive that message. So we have to build an API endpoint. Um, and that endpoint mostly uh, sends a message, a message to uh, some logic component like delete item to actually perform the action. So this is a common uh, 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 setup that we find in applications. So um, and uh, the problem, or at least problem, uh, uh, I've built a lot of uh, uh, full stack applications. So I've did this a lot of times. And for me, it always has felt that uh, uh, two steps, so step two and step three, have always felt like a bit of an overhead because uh, they don't provide any business value. Um, uh, but also, as so you have to build it, you have to test it. Uh, but also, if you change the logic or your data or whatever, then uh, uh, you have to update four things. So you have to uh, update your logic, you have to update your endpoint, your API request, and your UI. So um, actually, what we want to do is, is to uh, limit the number of steps that we have to uh, build or do to, uh, to create the communication. So that's the journey. So we have looked at uh, 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 some options uh, that are, are available right now. So we're not looking in the past, but we are looking at what is available now. Uh, and one of the options, which is commonly used already, is uh, a mediator solution. And a mediator solution is just an in-between uh, solution. It sits between the front end and the back end that uh, uh, automates the communication for you. So if you look at the number of steps, we can uh, limit the number of steps from four to uh, three steps. So we still have to build the UI, uh, but we, uh, uh, and the logic, of course, but uh, we also need to build the binding. So we need to uh, uh, define the communication between these two. So if you look at, at some options th uh, that are available, uh, I think the most commonly used is T TRPC. Anyone is, is using TRPC? Hands? Uh, I see only a few hands, so <laughs> not that many. Um, uh, others are, uh, T TRPC is really a, 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 a remote procedure call, uh, um, um, a, a framework or library. Um, and an alternative that claims to be faster than, than TRPC is Tempo. Uh, but there are other types of alternatives out there, uh, like a remote, and that is really like a CRUD uh, uh, option. Uh, so that's uh, more like working with data entities. So if you're if you're building a CRUD uh, uh, application, then remote is a perfect fit. Uh, if you want to have more flexibility, then TRPC of te or Tempo will be uh, a great option. So uh, let's look at, uh, at one implementation. Uh, we will look at uh, a TRPC. So if we would uh, uh, I use it and implement uh, uh, our delete item function, then uh, we have to create uh, an up router. So, so TRPC works with a routing system. Um, so we create a, a delete item entry. Uh, we make it a public pro uh, procedure, so you can call it, uh, and you uh, you have an input, and uh, then you have a query, which is the actual implementation or the execution of the code. Um, uh, so this is on the server side, um, and on the client side, uh, we can uh, create a TRPC client. There are multiple types of clients uh, uh, available, but that's not really re relevant for now, and you can just link uh, uh, to your backend, and from there you can uh, use the TRPC client to execute your uh, uh, function. Uh, so that's quite simple. And what TRPC provides uh, uh, is end to end type safety. So, uh, which means if you change your function uh, uh, on the backend, 
then uh, uh, you will get an error on the front end. So it knows that it has to align to each other. So that is really uh, helpful in my experience. So, so that is one option. Uh, another option is a bit newer, uh, is a bit upcoming, um, and that are uh, meta frameworks. Um, and what these do, uh, these go a even a step further than the mediators. So they really glue the front end and the back end together. So they uh, live in one uh, code base, so next to each other. Uh, and by that, they uh, limit the number of steps uh, from three even to uh, two. So that means we only uh, uh, have to build uh, the UI and the logic, and we can forget about the rest. So this is kind of an ideal si situation, right? So this is uh, uh, starting to look like something. Well, a few men and meta frameworks, I think one can be guessed. Uh, uh, the best known, I think, is Next.js. Someone is using a meta framework or, or Next.js. Uh, more hands than TRPC. Uh, uh, fun fact is that Next.js is commonly used with T TRPC, at least more and more. Uh, at least that is the trend that I see. Uh, but there, of course, are other uh, meta frameworks like Remix, also with uh, uh, the, the React uh, uh, framework as a front-end framework, uh, Quick. Uh, version 1.0 uh, just released, uh, so that's one, at least Quick City. Uh, that's the meta framework for Quick. Uh, and there are more like Solid Start, uh, Nux CS, and Nux is for, uh, for Vue, uh, SvelteKit, uh, and there are more out there, but uh, these are the most uh, popular ones. So, uh, uh, how, do, how does that work? If you look at, at Next CS, then uh, uh, they have something called uh, server actions, uh, but this is still in alpha phase, uh, so it's not off officially released yet, so you can play with it, but you can't really use it in production yet. Uh, uh, but what you can do is, is build your server function, like delete item, and you can annotate it as a uh, use server, like uh, an XAS uses uh, a system that you can annotate it to use the client or the server, so that is quite clean. Uh, so, uh, once you have this defined, then you ca can uh, create your dialogue. So, this is a sim si simple example. We just have a simple dialogue and we have a button. And if we click the button, uh, we can directly call uh, the delete item function and all the uh, um, communication is automated. So, that means it will automatically create so some API in the background and call your server, um, uh, etc. Uh, so that is already what's happening now. Uh, and of course, you can always add middleware to these solutions, as well to TRPC uh, as a meta frameworks. So you can add uh, validation, security, etc. So, so it's not really open. You can really uh, 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 get a grip on uh, what needs to happen with your communication. Um, yeah, so that is, uh, is a great start. Um, so now uh, we have looked at uh, two uh, ty type of solutions, and I think that the meta frameworks are the, are the most obvious ones uh, to use, at least from my perspective, because you have uh, 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 eliminated all the communication, so you don't have to build uh, the communication yourself. Uh, but if we look at the pros and the cons, well, the pros, of course, are it's fully automated, so uh, two steps left, only the UI and the logic, um, and it's an out-of-the-box solution, uh, so you don't have to install an additional dependency, and you just can uh, can go after install, uh, but it's also an additional uh, vendor lock-in. So if you use a framework, um, uh, and something gets outdated or doesn't fit your needs anymore, then yeah, you have to replace your framework, uh, and that means a loss of all your uh, automated co communication as well. So that's kind of a risk, at least from a future proofing uh, perspective, this is a bit of a risk. Um, if we look at a mediator solution, uh, well, the pros are that uh, they have a better uh, portability. So that means if you want to 
uh, change to another mediator, the impact is not that big as uh, replacing your whole meta framework. So, and you have a free freedom of choice. So all the uh, met meta frameworks, um, they, uh, 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 they only provide a uh, RPC style. Um, and uh, as I said, you can also use Remult like a, a crit like solution. So that means you, you can better pick a solution that, uh, uh, that fits your need. So you are less limited, but uh, it's partly automated. So instead of two steps, you still have to uh, 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 define some additional code or, or create some additional code. So we have three steps left. So you have to create the binding. So that's not ideal. And if you look at uh, 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 on how this works, so this is a bit of uh, 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 of the problem that we still see from a future proofing uh, 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 perspective. Um, both the mediators and the uh, 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 meta frameworks, they are in code solutions. So that means if you want to uh, migrate from the one from, 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 from the one or the other, yeah, uh, the code is not equal to each other. So that means you all uh, you always have to refactor something. Uh, yeah, and if you have to replace your full mem meta framework in a year or five or six, yeah, that can still be a lot of work. So that brings us to the next. So uh, we see that the problem is in the code. So uh, in our uh, ideal world, uh, all the co communication part, which is the overhead, which doesn't add any business value, should not be in the code. Should be easy to be replaced. So, uh, but if it can be in the code, uh, where should it be? Uh, and here, I can prove that I'm a genius illustrator because um, this is the runtime. <laughs> I didn't know how to how to draw it, so this is it. Uh, but uh, we saw a solution. So okay, we take take it out of the code and we bring it back to the runtime. So another layer, a lower layer. Um, and this, uh, uh, we can do this uh, simply by uh, using the uh, uh, the JavaScript module system. So what we want to, to achieve, uh, as you can see in the code, um, in the dialog, uh, we wanted to uh, import the function as it, if it is just locally available. So you want to just Im import your function uh, and that's it. And that means that we want to automate the communication. <laughs> uh, we want to automate the communication at the import level. Uh, so that is what we have done. Uh, and that is what I want to, want to demonstrate. I see we have a few minutes left, so we have some time. Um, so for the demo, uh, I prepared a, a React demo. I think most people will understand, uh, uh, but all the all the all the concepts are the same, of course, for if you use Vue or uh, 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 yeah, some other uh, uh, front-end framework. And in combination, and there, uh, that is our product. It's it's open source, I must say. So we have created an open source uh, a, a solution, and it's called GTAR. Uh, it stands for just-in-time architecture, but that is for later. Uh, first, we, we will start with the demo. And I, let's see if that will work. And if it goes to the right screen, no. Then where is it? No, it goes nowhere. I don't know where my screen is. <laughs> Okay, I can't find my screen. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I have to uh, see where my screen are. Uh, where my screen is. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, this this will work. Thank 
Thank you very much. Okay. We're ready. Here we go. Uh, is this readable for everyone? Okay, great. So our product is called Citar. It's on NPM. So we've created a um, a, uh, a runtime, obviously. So it's 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 a JavaScript slash TypeScript uh, runtime. Uh, so uh, the code will run and on the front end and on the back end. So that's uh, something that works really well. Um, so I will create a new uh, project uh, with npm create. So we've just uh, uh, created a starter uh, a starter script. Uh, So I will just uh, name it uh, 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 Gitar Project, uh, and I will pick uh, 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 a React for, for now. So now I can go to uh, the folder. Uh, I must do an npm uh, install. So don't use the internet right now. I'm downloading the whole internet currently. <laughs> it should be done quite quickly, I think. This is always a risk with live demos. Sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, it did work. So now I can build it. And if I'm correct, then I can uh, I run two uh, two instances. So I can run um, a GTAR as a standalone uh, 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 setup. So and uh, I want to start a uh, defeat live server, uh, so we can do some uh, some hot reloads. And if I'm correct, then we could see, and this is the great page we've built, <laughs> but I want to sh show you something. Um, I want to look at, uh, at the network. Oh, I see I've already I prepared something. So uh, first, let's look at some code. It's working, so how does this work? Um, so we've built uh, a simple app uh, with only one uh, simple function in a shared folder. Uh, and that is uh, this complex function. It says hello, it gets a name, and it says hello. Uh, and from the uh, app component, um, uh, we just uh, simply import uh, the say hello. Um, and we, we've created uh, the, the, a get message function that is used when, when the component is loaded once. So for the people that uh, don't know, I, I react with use effect. You can uh, uh, initiate your component. So we just get the message and display it uh, here. So that means everything our get or our say hello function returns uh, will end up here and will look like this. So if you look at how uh, how this works, I will reload this. Uh, so we see uh, uh, something's happening. So uh, uh, as I said, GTAR works at import level. So that means if we are uh, uh, importing our uh, say, say hello function, uh, uh, in this case, uh, it will get automatically a remote implementation because it knows I have co uh, configured the function to be on the backend side. So not on the front end side, so we get a remote implementation um, and uh, it calls the function. Can we see it here? So in general, uh, so here it automatically creates an RPC call to call the function, get the result, uh, and, and present it. So basically, uh, that is how it works. Um, and what I can do now is if I go to the feed configuration, so that is uh, uh, the build tool uh, that supports plugins. So we've created a plugin for uh, feed. And if I disable this one, it will automatically re I reload. And we see here that we have a say hello function. And if you look at uh, uh, how, how it looks like, we, we are getting the actual implementation. So we, we are getting the actual function. So, so that means if we enable GTAR, it will automatically create a remote call, and if we disable it, we will just get the actual implementation. And how do we control it? How much time do we have left? A few seconds. So th this is the last thing I will uh, show. Uh, so with GTAR, you can create application segments. 
so you can divide your ap application in segments. And, and in this case, I have configured uh, 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 the say hello function. I've put it in, in a segment file and I've spun up a backend server and I said, okay, you have to uh, load this segment. So that means GTAR automatically understands, okay, the uh, the say hello function runs at the back end, and if the front end calls it, you just have to find it there. And if you remove it from the segment file and reload, then uh, it will uh, automatically be placed at the front end again. So I see that the time is up, so I will stop here. I want to thank you for your time <laughs> and for your uh, and for your attention. And if you have any questions, oh, and if you want more information, also important, of course. Uh, we have to go to, to the next slide. If you have any questions, I'll be around wearing this shirt. Uh, my partner in crime is, is sitting there, but also uh, running around with a guitar shirt. So you can always uh, 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 ask us any question. And if you want to see uh, or find more information, then you can find it on the on the guitar website. So that's it. Now I'm really done. <laughs>